lot going on. Pat's near retirement and counting the days, as they say. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, I like it here. Anyway, of course. So, um, <laughs> Dr. Tierney is going to talk to you a little bit about, you know, his stuff that he's been doing, kind of a for-profit sort of angle and thing. And so, you know, bring your questions and all that kind of stuff, okay? All right. You're good. Thank you. Well, how's everybody doing? Good. Good. I haven't had most of you in a class. I'll see you. So great. Uh, I'm going to be around. I'm just uh, going on faculty day in general, which means I'll be teaching in the fall and not in the spring semester. Uh, this is my 26th year here. Um, I hope I'm not out of touch. Uh, I got, uh, I just uh, a couple weeks ago got uh, the uh, best presentation award at the an international hospitality and tourism conference. Nice. So, you know, I mean, I you got to hope you stay in touch. I like it here. And some of the reasons I like it here uh, is that it allows me to do research and um, actually have a need for someone to help me with research if, there, if you have somebody who's interested. Um, uh, help with focus groups. This is me in focus groups uh, that I conduct with uh, visitors to Minton and Sullivan Space District preserves. Uh, so I've got something. Um, so I've done similar work for the Park Service. Uh, we're going to be starting in fall uh, a big project with Golden Gate National Recreation Area on uh, their visitor services and evaluations. 32 different survey sites in GGNRA. So fun stuff going on research-wise. I also I'm presenting on Monday uh, on green practices of resorts, and that's one of my specialization areas is sustainability and green practices. So a uh, little bit of background on me. Uh, the other side of uh, what I do is uh, my wife and I have owned and operated our own uh, commercial recreation business for 25 years. We sold it about 11 years ago. As part of that entrepreneurial cycle where you start to build it and sell it and uh, then go on to something else. And what I have gone on to is I now lead tours for the Sierra Club Outings Program in Africa, South America, Colorado, Utah, uh, several, Costa Rica, a couple other places. So I'm really excited about that. That's what I'm going to be doing in some of my retirement time. But uh, I'm very passionate about... Uh, commercial recreation and feel like the private sector has a place, a very important place in uh, the recreation, parks and tourism field. Uh, they're not all just unscrupulous uh, profit mongers. Uh, there's uh, a lot of really great organizations out there. Uh, our company, we offered whitewater rafting and adventure travel programs in Colorado, Utah, and Alaska. And we had offices in Colorado and in Utah. And we had about 25 employees. They were seasonal, so I could work here and then uh, uh, move out to Colorado in the summertime. So it was uh, a nice combination of things. Uh, but one of uh, the areas that we worked on is this river right here. This is called the Yampa River. Uh, probably never anybody has heard of it, uh, unless you've been to Steamboat Springs Ski Resort in Colorado. But it runs right through the middle of Steamboat Springs. But it's the last major free flowing river in the entire seven state Colorado River Basin. So I want you to think about that, the last one. And so I've worked on it now for 40 years. I've, uh, I started out as a kayak based river ranger for the National Park Service. And then uh, eventually did my research, my master's research on it, and then uh, started our outfitting company on it. So, We've been, uh, I've been working on this. It's a great river. Uh, just to, to give you a sense of place, uh, that's, that's what it looks like. Uh, and it's not as deep as the Grand Canyon, but it's more wild than the Grand Canyon. Through the Colorado, the Colorado the Grand Canyon. And uh, I collaborated in 2016 with uh, a well-known photographer in Colorado. And, uh, you know, I, I can brag a little bit, right? Give me, a, give me an opportunity. This won uh, 2016 Best Nature Book of the Year 
uh, for Colorado Humanities. So, uh, and it was done to protect the river, to keep it in a free-flowing um, state by raising awareness of, of from the top headwaters to the bottom of the river where it goes into the green. Uh, what is it that makes it a special place? So, uh, this is things I was working on while I was uh, uh, an outfitter as well. So, uh, a little bit about what uh, what my background is. Let's uh, let's get into this thing we call commercial recreation, tourism, and event planning. here in our department that is uh, events, tourism, and commercial recreation, which is one of the more private sector sides of all the options that we have. Uh, community recreation, obviously, and public recreation. Uh, and we also have uh, therapeutic focus, uh, generally public recreation nonprofits. So this is one of the areas where if you have an interest in private sector, then this might be something uh, might be something good for you to look into. Uh, let's look at a career path. Uh, just for me, well, I already told you about that. Let's go to the next one. All right, so maybe two different parts to commercial recreation. Commercial means for profit, um, and oops, went the wrong way. Let's try that one again. Uh, there's uh, the idea of local recreation. That is where you and I uh, imbibe in these things, and we enjoy them because they're found in the local area, and we can, uh, access them quickly. Uh, so. Commercial services provided to local residents near their home. So how many of you belong to a health club or a fitness club? Okay. Raise, your, raise your hand if you, if you belong to a gym or a fitness club. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so quite a bit. Those are typically private sector, right? 24-hour fitness or something else? Okay. Uh, entertainment venues. How many of you have been to a concert recently at a big venue? Yeah, shoreline, almost everybody. Those are typically privately funded and promoted and uh, produced, right? Uh, arts programs, uh, parks, you go, how can the private sector have parks? Well, yeah, Disneyland is a park, right? Uh, but many times, uh, private companies manage parts of what is going on in a, in a public park. Uh, so we'll give you some examples of that. Um, who can tell me what the season was for uh, the Giants? How many did they win, San Francisco Giants? How many did they win? How many did they lose? Anybody a hardcore Giants fan here? Okay, let's make it easier. Uh, did they have a winning season or a losing season? Losing. Ooh, that's too easy. I need to narrow it down. Um, because I have a official San Francisco Giants rally right. towel. Oh. Here. Here it is. Uh, so, uh, what happened to Madison Baumgartner? Didn't he hurt his arm? Who said that? All right, there you go. He, uh, he had a motorcycle accident before the season started and he hurt himself and so he never really recovered that much. All right, but the San Francisco Giants are an example of a private company that's well known that does a lot of good in the community. They have a Giants fund for, for kids and uh, they fund a lot of great things in the community. So those are examples of 
local recreation. Then there's the services to visitors. Uh, another riddle. What do we, what are we all at one time or another, but never want to, want to admit it? Tourists. A tourist. <laughs> uh, you, know, you don't go around saying, hi, I'm a tourist. How are you? Uh, but on the other hand, we all travel. I would be willing to wager most of us travel for pleasure uh, or for uh, business, a combination of things. So when we go to those new areas that you don't know too much about or you're visiting a favorite place as a tourist, uh, you might take in events there. You might go to attractions. Uh, how many of you have been to Disneyland? It happens every time. It's incredible how many people go to Disneyland. Uh, so that's an example of an attraction. This brings people to a new area. Uh, resorts where they combine lodging with activities. And uh, we consider cruise lines floating resorts because there's lots of activities going on on the boat and it provides lodging as well. So we have cruise lines, resorts, travel facilitators. They used to be called travel agents. They're still used, but they do really high-end stuff. They don't do, they don't buy, you don't buy a ticket going to Los Angeles for them. You, everybody does that online. But if you're going to spend two weeks in Africa, and you're going to spend a lot of money doing that, your precious time, you'll use a travel agent many times, because they're experts. They know the area. They can set up arrangements, they have access to certain airfares that you don't. So we still use travel facilitators. These are all examples of private sector commercial recreation services that are provided by the private sector to visitors. So a way to look at a model, the whole picture here is there's the travel component. Oops, I keep doing that. There we go. The travel component. What's that? Airlines. Income. Rental cars. Okay. Uh, trains. BART. Have you heard the campaign, the BART campaign? Bartable. 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 They made up a word. Uh, meaning that there's all these places you can access, these great leisure destinations you can get access by BART. Okay. Uh, so many travel providers uh, are there, so getting from point A to point B. Then there's lodging. Uh, everything from campgrounds to fancy resorts and hotels, right? Uh, one of my recent research projects was on uh, vacation rentals like Airbnb and uh, found that in San Francisco at one particular, at the Outside Lands Festival, I surveyed 10,000 visitors electronically uh, from Outside Lands and found out that about 15% of them stayed in vacation rentals. So I got lots of information about them and why they stayed there and what they liked about it and what they didn't like about it. Uh, so that's an example of a new type of lodging, relatively new, uh, that is out there. But there's all kinds of other lodging as well, right? And then food service. Uh, you know, restaurants, yeah. But how about fancy restaurants? Are there people or foodies that go to a destination because it's got great restaurants? Absolutely. San Francisco is the center of the universe there. New York and San Francisco for foodies. Um, but most of it is we need food while we're at a location or we're gonna, when we're traveling. Uh, then there's this one over here that they called Recreation, Events, and Entertainment. That's us, for sure. That's all about us. And um, that's what we're going to focus on today. Another article that came out uh, in Business Week, not your typical magazine that is, talks about recreation very often, right? Um, but in this case, they came out and had an article that said uh, the U.S. economy has changed. We're different than what we were in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. How are we different? How is the U.S. economy different? How does it make a difference for us? And 
they said there's a growing importance of something called entertainment and recreation as far as spending and the importance in the economy. And uh, they said that recreation and entertainment industry had more job growth than any other sector in the economy. That's us. Uh, consumer spending at twice the overall rate of other sectors on average. Uh, 13 billion, B as in billion dollars in new construction. Uh, had thousands of new jobs created. And they considered it the driving force of technology. And you go, oh, wow, we're, we're hands-on people. We like, to, we like to talk one on one. What's going on with technology? How can recreation potentially impact technology? I'm asking you, how could recreation potentially impact high tech? Anybody want to try it? It's nothing new, but the geocaching thing is geocaching. Okay. The driving force of uh, people learning how to use GPS and kind of thing, and also that's Phoenix. one. Of, that's one of the things. Uh, geocaching is all technology based. Let's. Uh, <coughs> how many of you have been to the Disneyland ride? What is it? Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm -hmm. oh, Raise yeah. your hand if you, if you like that ride. You've been on it. Okay, we got some people who like that ride. Do you know that there's a bank of computers, the most sophisticated computers that are made today outside of the, the secret government ones that run that ride? Now I want you to think about why. They have all those different animations, they have all those different projections, the sound, the motion, all that has to be coordinated. Guess what? That takes the most sophisticated computer that we have. That's what they mean by driving new technology. Uh, so that with the big events plus uh, what's virtual reality? Virtual reality is mostly done in leisure time. Okay, so uh, it's a driving force. So if you're a techie kind of person, you like that, there are alternatives for you in this private commercial recreation air arena. Okay. <coughs> so let's look at us. You can take all kinds of specialization, tourism, advanced and commercial recreation classes that are, major, that are available to you. Uh, business foundation is encouraged, it's private sector. Uh, that's a good thing to have, a few business classes. Uh, but some of the specialized classes we have, leisure, travel, and tourism. Have anybody taken that? Are you taking it now, anybody? Okay. So mostly about the private sector. Uh, Conference event planning management. How many of you have an interest in maybe being an event planner or working? Yeah, I see some, see some hands. So this is your basic class. And then we have another class called Destination Recreation Resource. I teach that, and it's in fall. Um, we haven't taught this one for a while, but startup and sustainable operations. So if you'd like to own your own recreation business, what about putting a plan, really spending some time to put a plan together to see if it would be financially feasible to do it? Uh, ecotourism principles and practices. Um, and then, if again, if you're event planning, you should be doing this, which is the second semester of uh, advanced conference and event planning. Okay? So those are classes that we have that are really geared towards the private sector, commercial recreation, events, tourism. Um, and so if you're interested in those, you should kind of be marking those, talking to Dr. Rosegard, figuring out if that's something that you want to consider doing. And then we put together the internship uh, as well. And <clears throat> let's look at what are some segments or part of this commercial recreation industry that everybody says is growing so rapidly, right? Um, anybody recognize any of those logos? Those are all commercial recreation event tourism companies in the Bay Area or Circus Circus design, but um, in this region. So what are some parts to that? Let's try to organize it. So you got the travel part. There's JetBlue, the airlines, the railroads. Um, United Airlines was interested in having some of our students the other day. Uh, 
meeting event planning. So that's all those people who put together the meetings, uh, as well as promote them. So it could be, where's an example of a meeting event planning site here? How about this one? Sharp Events. Right? That's a meeting planner that does events all over the country and occasionally internationally. So um, right here in San Francisco, we really are fortunate. We have a lot of great companies that are involved in event planning. Um, sports management. San Francisco Giants. Uh, they can only improve just like the 49ers can only improve, right? Uh, but we do have a winning team. Who is that? The Warriors, of course. All right. So uh, we have had interns with the Warriors, but you got to be careful. Warriors want you to, uh, the all they want a lot of times is just people to sell tickets outside the stadium. Not much depth to that internship. So be careful when you're looking for an internship and make sure it's a it's a solid and, and <coughs> one you're going to learn a lot. Um, Public Assembly Facility Management, yawn, yawn, yawn. What does that mean? Public Assembly Facility Management. This is actually a certification program that you can get. Uh, and it gets you a 40 hour a week job, it gets you full benefits, it gets you more than a living wage, uh, but it's got kind of a boring title to it. What's, uh, what's Public Assembly Facility Management? I've had a number of my students go in there and do real well. Uh, have you heard of the Cow Palace? Yeah. So Cow Palace is run by a private company that is uh, contracted by the city to run the shows, the programs. Lasconi Center, public assembly. It's places where big groups of people get together for various types of events, whether they're an apple demonstration or whether they're the flower, the San Francisco Flower Show. Um, they don't put on the events, but they run the whole facility, coordinate the events. Uh, they don't promote them, but they, they're involved. One of my students, former students, said, I asked him, what's the best part of your job? Now, I want you to think about it. Public Assembly Facility Management. What's the best part of their job? They get to meet famous rock and roll stars or people that... The, 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 Acts that come to the Cow Palace, they get, they're behind the scenes. They're walking around. They get to meet famous people. So I like that part. Corporate recreation. Has anybody seen the new uh, Apple campus down south? Uh, seen drawings or anything like that? They have a rec corporate recreation center there that's to die for. You know, we have a great new center on campus, right? Really nice. Now, make that ten times larger. And that's what the Apple Recreation Center looks like. Totally free to employees and their families. They have events that go all over the place. Uh, they travel, travel program. So very sophisticated. So you, you could work for Apple in their corporate recreation program. That's an example. We also have, here's one. Uh, let me find it here. Adventure Associates. Started by one of the professors in our program a few years ago, quite a few years back. And uh, they put together team building programs and ropes courses and climbing walls. Wow, how cool. So if you go to North Star in the summer or some of the resorts in the, the Tahoe area, uh, they operate climbing walls and team building programs for various companies as well as individuals that come through there. Pretty cool. So you could live in Tahoe and have a nice job and enjoy all those things. Uh, so those are examples of corporate recreation. Local commercial recreation, health clubs, bowling alleys, ski and board shops, movie theaters. There's lots and lots of examples. Bike rentals on the bay, sea kayaking programs. You name it. We've got a lot of them here. A lot of opportunities for people. Casinos and gaming. Uh, are there any, is there gaming? Gaming refers to gambling, right? That's the, uh, that's the, the cleansed version of gambling, right? What, uh, are there, is there gaming in California? I mean, it's, you know, yeah. 
Where is that? Where does gaming occur in California? <coughs> like those, I guess that, I know that uh, San Jose, that they have like a center, I think that they can use it to play games there. Okay, San Jose has a center. Mm -hmm. Where else? I mean, where do you find um, it? Yeah. There's a lot of places down south where like um, the Native American reservations are. Right, right. Both of you were going to say that. Yeah. So, Indian reservations are considered a state within California. They can make up their own laws and rules, and one of their rules is gaming is allowed. And so we see a lot of uh, casinos uh, and entertainment centers that are all now in California on Indian reservations. They have, they're looking for people. They want to have professionals help them out. Uh, let's keep going. There's some more that you recognize, right? What's this one? Who knows? Everybody knows that one. What's this one? It's yours. That's my company. Thank you. How do you know that? Good for you. No, that was the old company. We were called the Drift Adventures. And uh, we did the rafting program. This is in Utah, in uh, Dinosaur National Park, uh, National Island. So, let's go back. Cruise lines and resorts. Well, you could help out in the marketing department and sales. That's a great way to get a job entering in that competitive environment. Uh, they have recreation department. Did you know that the Ritz Carlton in Half Moon Bay has a kids, pro kids camp? They have adult programs. They have a very nice recreation department. And I think our, the current manager of it is the alum of our department. So if you're interested in those kinds of things, that's an option. Okay. Um, one of, my, one of the, the graduates I have that I'm most jealous of, he, he contacts me every couple of years or every year and says, uh, I'm now in Barbados today. He's a cruise director. He, he is... He uh, is in charge of all the recreation programs and things that are going on on board a cruise ship. And he's on the water for six months out of the year and difficult to maintain a relationship with anybody because they're not on the boat with you, they're, they're a long ways away. But, wow, travel around the world. Uh, Los Angeles has a lot of cruise, is a base for a lot of cruise companies, or San Diego. So, you know, if this is something you would be interested in, you really have to work hard at this because this is a competitive job. But boy, when you get involved, and most of the job opportunities are land-based, not boat-based, but options. Options. We're all about options. Travel arrangers, uh, what's, uh, do you see a, um, I don't have it here. Uh, there it is. Yes, there. Do you see an electronic travel agency in this slide of logos? Do you see a logo from an electronic travel agent? Yeah, you do. Travelocity, right? That's just an electronic travel agency. Um, but somebody's got to run that. Somebody's got to make all the technology work behind it. Somebody's got to reach out and sell their programs to businesses so they get listed. Somebody's, there's got a lot of opportunities. Guess what? They have an office in San Francisco. So if this is something that you're interested in, you know, I'm just trying to throw, try to open up your horizon to more than working in a park and working outside, you know, for a nonprofit. So there are opportunities here. I'm not saying they're better, but I'm saying there's opportunities. Uh, destination management companies. Uh, these are organizations that promote and sell a destination. That's why they're called destination. Uh, and so they work with groups that are coming into the city or into a destination, and they put together a program and events and coordinate everything and, and then sell it. Uh, you don't see them because you're not coming in as a group, but man, this is a big part of the, the industry, and there's really nice jobs involved with this. Uh, so how many... Have you heard San Francisco? That's an example of a DMO, Destination Management Organization. Um, and 
We have a lot of interns and a lot of employees in San Francisco travel over the years. We still do now. Uh, we've got internships that are starting up in spring at San Francisco travel. So are you are you applying for one? Awesome. I got one. Oh, you got one. What are you going to be doing? Uh, I'm not. I'm meeting with them next week to discuss more about what I want to do. Excellent, excellent. Which department are you going to be in here? Uh, visitors experience. Okay, great. So there, there it is. Say no more. Here's one of your own that's going to be uh, interning and probably working with them later on. Uh, tour operators. That's what we did. You put together a package of adventure activities, educational activities, maybe sometimes lodging, food. Put together, our trips were typically five days long. Um, the Sierra Club outings in Africa are typically <coughs> two weeks long. So you got to put together all those providers and make sure it all works, coordinates really well. Um, and then you've got tour leaders, like some of the things I'm doing these days. Um, uh, and all the planners and coordinators and all the people that make these things happen. Uh, those are all good paying jobs. And theme parks. How can we live without Disneyland? Well, I think California would drop off the edge of the ocean, right, if, if Disneyland disappeared. Uh, but we have other places. Uh, what's an animal park? Zoo. Zoos. Zoos. And we have Sea Worlds and so forth, right? Uh, amusement park. What's an amusement park in the Bay Area? Is that a cruise camp? I'm sorry? Uh, Great America. Great America, yeah, thank you. Six Flags. Okay. Uh, Vice President <coughs> of Six Flags was an alum of our program. He's moved on doing other things, but you know, if we work at it long enough uh, and hard enough, there's options. So, um, I wanted to just share with you some of the segments, some of the job opportunity segments, and some of the providers. <coughs> and again, most of these are right in the Bay Area. So uh, these are options that you might consider when you're out there. So let's pick one. Let's pick one occupation. And we're going to look at event planners, okay? And find out something about that. What do they do? What kind of qualifications do they need to get hired? Uh, what's involved with the job. All right? Sound good? All right. So planners coordinate every detail of an event ranging from small business promotions to large conventions, from speakers and event location to ranging for online materials and audio-visual equipment. <coughs> they do it all. They don't necessarily do everything themselves, but they coordinate every last detail. Uh, what's the most nerve-wracking period of time for an event planner? Day of the event. The day of the event or the morning of the event is everything going to work? Oh my god, I got so much writing on this. My client is going to fire me. I'm going to get fired if this doesn't work. A um, lot of pressure on event planners. But you get to spend somebody else's money, which is really fun. Work environment, planners oversee multiple operations at one time, so it's not just one event, you may be involved in two or three events that are going on <coughs> in different stages uh, in the process. Uh, you orchestrate the activities for different groups of people, so you have to understand the needs and wants of a meeting planner who is bringing 10 VIPs into San Francisco. What do they want? Are they going to stay at the Holiday Inn? <coughs> High-end clients? No. no. Where are they going to stay? St. Francis, the Fairmont. So that's that. Well, that's what that kind of client needs. What about uh, a group of Dutch tourist uh, families that are coming in? Not necessarily a Fairmont. Okay. So uh, they work with different types of groups. Event planners spend the majority of their time in their offices. During, but during events, they work on site at an event location. They travel regularly. They have a great variety of work. No day is ever the same, as I've been told many times by event planners. It's always different. Different client, different event, different location, different part of your task. Uh, but that's also kind of stressful. 
It's also challenging but stressful. So what do you need to be uh, a good event planner? This is according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, where they look at different types of jobs. Uh, most have excellent written and verbal communication skills. You have to be able to walk into a room not knowing a single person and be able to shake hands and talk with every person in the room. you got to be comfortable with that. Some people are fearful of that. You can get over it. You can, you can, you can learn to do that. Uh, you have to have, have really good written skills because why? You're dealing with contracts that are multi-million dollar contracts sometimes. It better be right. You better get it in writing and very clear, right? Uh, so that's one of the big important skills. Interpersonal skill. What does that mean? Anybody want to share with me what you think, what they think by interpersonal skill? Interpersonal. Is it relating to your clients' needs? Yeah, you, you have to understand them and you have to relate to them. You have to be able to make fun when it's appropriate. You, you ought to be serious when it's appropriate. You've got to have a good time. You've got to show them a good time. Um, but you've also got to be on track for the budget. So interpersonal skills, how do you work with other people? Are you e really at ease working with a lot of different people? Are you comfortable with that? But especially, like you say, your client. Yeah, mm -hmm. good, good, good. Yeah. You had your hand up for interpersonal? You are, is that all? I got it, okay, yeah, got it. all right. Um, the job requires organizational skills. How do you keep track of three different meetings that are going on at the same, in, in your working, your plan, you're doing it at, at the same time, um, in different cities, with different teams, you got to be organized. Okay. And you've got to be quantitative and analytical. Why would, meaning, wait a second, you know, you're just kind of coordinating events, you, you take care of the entertainment and the room and the transportation. Why do you need to be quantitative and analytical? Whatever that means, right? Quantitative meaning, you're working with numbers. Analytical, you have to be able to analyze numbers and make sense of them and draw conclusions from that. What would be a reason why an event planner would need to do that? Yeah? You have to have a certain amount of people, maximum amount of people, or minimum amount of people, right? They need to know that and you want to plan around that, right? The number of guests is just one, but then you've got the number of crew, and then you've got different crews, and then, you know, and, and shuffleboard, how do you keep all of them together? And what's the other thing that's related to what he's saying? It's numbers. Numbers. Really important. Money? Money! Budget! So you got to stay on track with your budget. you got to project what the expenses are going to be as you're going through the event so that there's no surprises at the end. Um, so... Yeah, you've got to have some quantitative analytical skills. You've got to be good at Excel and other things. Okay. Uh, so analytical skills for budgets and understand <laughs> negotiate contracts as well as computer skills. Um, you know, what's, uh, who wants to share with me what you think is a computer skill that a meeting planner would need? Knowing now, you know a little bit more about meeting planners, what they do. What would be um, a computer skill that they would need? Okay, I told you that one. Good. Thank you. I'm glad you're listening. You're on top of it. What else? Being able to collaborate, like on Google Docs, to look at different things with other people. So much of this now is all on the cloud, and you've got a client in Berlin, and you're here in San Francisco. And you're not going to meet until two days before the event. Everything has to take place, all the planning, everything else has to take place <coughs> online in a virtual world. Um, so, yeah, very good. Uh, but a lot of it is uh, like uh, Salesforce. What's Salesforce? Salesforce is a database program that helps companies keep track of expenses and plan their events and that sort of thing. Uh, what's CAD? computer-aided design, uh, where you need to lay out a floor plan uh, that the client wants, and you might use CAD 
a CAD program to help you do that. So I'm not saying you need to know, be expert in all those, but those are examples of programs that maybe are being used. Uh, so what, are we, what am I saying about meeting planners? What an exciting, thrilling, outrageously fun, and in many, most cases, well-paid job, but it takes some hard skills. And so, you know, the classes that you take here will help you develop some of those hard skills that will make you more um, competitive. So, the job outlook, this is uh, five years old, so bump that 45 up a lot. Um, I, I think it's more like uh, 75 to 100 thousand right now for a, a meeting planner that has um, event planner that has good experience. So um, they say it's growing faster than the average type of job. So it's growing and it pays reasonably well. Uh, all right. Who was paying attention? All right. Name three skills needed to be a successful event planner. Who wants to try it? There's a prize on this. Okay, we have one person, then you're next, and then you're next if we get that far. Okay, go. Interpersonal? Interpersonal. One. Oh, you want me to oh, do all three? All three of them. You've got to come up with three. I'll give you. Oh, okay. Um, analytical skills and, uh, oh, what was that last one before? Quantitative. Quantitative and a car are one. Okay, oh. so you got two so far. Give it a try. You got this. You got it. You got it. You can do it. You can do it. Like data management, Excel, collaborative. That's analytical. Okay. Close. Close. What is she missing? Who's going to help her out? She's gonna, basic. Think Going to get a lifeline. Think oh. what? Think what? Basic. Basic. Personal skills. I said uh, okay, well, that, that's uh, what? Is that three? Don't you think that's three? No, I said that interpersonal. Four. Interpersonal. <laughs> Quantitative and analytical. That's two. And basic. 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 Okay, who wants to help her out? Lifeline. Computer skills. Computer skills, that's kind of analytical. What else? Uh, verbal skills. Verbal skills, yeah, okay. Verbal skills, yeah. All right. <laughs> verbal. Thanks a lot, Laura, for trying it. And getting so close, uh, you're the winner of a nice little battery pack to charge your cell phone. Nice. All right. So, technology. Let's get those. All right. Good job. Yes. So, let's, uh, let's kind of start to summarize what we've been talking about here using event planning as an example. Okay? It's the business of fun. It's still a business. You have to know analytical. You have to have good communication skills. You have to be able to you know, deal with contracts and budgets. But you're also facilitating all that fun. You're putting together programs. You're putting together travel plans. You're doing a lot in this particular arena. But what I'll leave you with is, but it's a business of fun. There are well-paid professional jobs. I mean, you can, you can do some of these things for free, right? But what we're saying is these jobs pay, can pay pretty well. And they're professionals, meaning that you have a little bit of flexibility to create things. You're not just doing the same thing over and over again every day. Uh, <clears throat> and we can prepare you for working in this industry. So if you combine classes with doing internships and any way you can get experience, it makes you competitive. We've seen it happen a lot with our, with our majors, with our students. So with that, um, I will leave you uh, to the rest of your Excellent. class. But does anybody have any questions? I'll put my, uh, I'll put my email up here. Yeah, that'd be great. And uh, you're, you're more than welcome to uh, contact me. Nobody fell asleep, that's good. That was a good yeah, all right. Okay, well, I'll let you go. Oh, question? 
Just a uh, commentary about them. Um, so do you, you ha so I I'm very curious about um how he, we had to use three basic skills like um the computers, interpersonals and verbals to work or it just will not work at all if it's in one individual skill. Yeah, uh, you de first of all you develop all those. It doesn't come naturally necessarily or for everybody. But what we're saying is the most successful event planners are able to communicate very well, written and verbally. They're able to track budgets and put together quantitative analysis. Um, and um, they have uh, you know, opportunities to be very creative and put together something that not everybody does every day. Um, so options like that. Yeah. And you know, it does take some experience. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't you know, don't uh, don't sweat it. If you if you want it, you can get it. We have lots of examples of our students who have become professional meeting planners uh, or event planners over the years. So, any more questions? Okay. Contact me if you uh, if you would like to uh, later on. Okay. Thank you so much.